Mother, I bring you fresh prey. You are so kind to me, daughters. <laughs> ah, now, let's take a look at him. Well, well, Ethan Winters. You escaped my little brother's idiot games, did you? Let's see how special you are. So who exactly is Lady Dimitrescu? That is the question for today's video. We'll be going over her backstory, how she ended up, how she is in the events of Resident Evil Village, my own personal opinion of her as a character, as well as some interesting backstory that you may not know, and some extra files in game that really show how evil she really was. We'll be covering all four laws this week, as well as some extra characters, so be sure to look out for Village videos all week. And without further ado, Let's get into who exactly Lady Dimitrescu is. So as we all know, Dimitrescu is one of the four lawns of the village and is a host of the Kado Parasite. The reasoning behind that is that Mother Miranda was attempting to find the perfect vessel to be able to revive her lost daughter and unfortunately the four lords of the village just weren't good enough. So they are now stuck there basically serving her and each of them have their own personal effects that they have received due to the uh, the infection. The mutation obviously did affect Lady Dimitrescu significantly physically, uh, giving her you know increased height, um, kind of adjusted her aging process so that she didn't really age as fast as everyone else, and of course making her fingernails extend into huge claws, and the ability to transform into a huge fucking dragon. Basically at will, uh, but that is not really shown in the game. A side effect because of the parasite and because of her kind of hereditary disease that she had before mutation, she does require an intake of human blood to keep her uh, powers basically in check so that she doesn't kind of die or age um, normally again. So there is a side effect there due to her kind of disease that she had prior to the infection. And uh, that isn't really showing much in game, but it is briefly there in notes that she needs the intake else she can't control her powers, basically. Dimitrescu also did her own experiments with the Kado parasite and infected three women with the oversight of Mother Miranda. Um, over the course of a week, the parasite did kind of produce these fly-like organisms and they did eventually completely eat the flesh of the bodies of these women, but then assimilated them. Basically, that means that these fly organisms cloned these women and were able to take the form of them as well as turn back into the swarm of flies, um, basically at will. We all know these women as Bella, Daniela and Cassandra and they are essentially the, the daughters of uh, Lady Dimitrescu. She basically took them under her wing and looked after them in her castle. But due to the effects of the fly or fly organisms, they are very, very very incapable of being in cold environments, hence why they are all locked up in the castle. That is where the confusion lies, they're not really vampires, it's just they can't go into the cold air, and obviously they live in Europe and it's cold most of the time, um, so they are affected by the cold temperatures, which is why they're always inside and they can't go out. Not vampires, just very picky flies. <laughs> And of course they do obviously um, have the need for the blood as well to keep their kind of powers in check. Um, if they do not take an intake of blood, the flies will basically just die and they'll die along with them. So, tears away it is and they need the blood to survive. So over the next couple, well couple, few centuries, uh, Dimitrescu and her daughters did consume the flesh of local peasants and servants throughout the village or castle staff. Um, they would do different things depending on the gender of who they were kind of dealing with if they were women. They would essentially be drained of their blood completely and they would then turn into the... There is a word for these things and I cannot pronounce it. They're like the Mor... Morica or the Morikai or something like that. They're the vampire zombie looking things with the swords in the basement um, of the castle basically. Um, they're husks, they're affected by mold, they are literally just husks of who they were before. Um, and all they can do is kind of just fumble around. What they would do with the blood of the women would actually put that into their wine. Uh, Dimitrescu has a pretty specific line of wine. Again, 
It has a really funny name, but it basically stands for Maiden's Blood. As for the male victims, they were completely hollowed out, blood was gone, organs were gone, and they were used as scarecrows, basically, um, in the vineyards of her castle, where she would kind of make her wine. Um, pretty grim, they were basically just used to keep crows away from the plants. But, uh, obviously their blood was used to keep their powers in check and to make sure nothing wrong happened. However, one of the villagers at the time did manage to steal a pretty valuable heirloom of the Dimitrescu family, and that is the Dagger of Death's Flowers. This is a poisoned blade that Ethan uses in the beginning of the Dimitrescu boss fight in the game to basically send her powers into complete overload and basically causes her to mutate very quickly and get very aggressive, and this is ultimately the death of her. But the villagers that attempted to steal it way back when did get caught and killed and kind of buried with it in the Tower of Worship, which is where you find the dagger. So uh, that's a pretty nice bit of nugget of information for you. Not everyone wanted her to be in charge, clearly, because people were going missing and dying without ever being seen again and never leaving the castle. So people were getting pretty, pretty sick of it. A couple of interesting extra little facts about her as a person before everything is she was actually born just before or sometime before the first world war so she's fairly old now obviously villagers set in 2021 so you know that's a long time to be alive and she actually used to be in a band <laughs> which is a little bit of inter extra information you probably didn't know uh she was in a jazz band called the paul boys very jazz music focused um which is pretty interesting to know she went by the name miss d in that band and obviously now she's called Lady D being the kind of Countess of Castle Dimitrescu so the more you know right now we'll look at some kind of in-game files that suggest what the uh, Dimitrescu and her daughters were up to from the perspective of workers in the castle as well as a couple uh, villagers these are mainly from the point of view of the handmaids and their experience while working for these people so um, it does give us a little more, bit more extra insight on what was going on in the castle prior to Ethan's arrival. So these followers in game are from one of the maids of the castle at the time, um, and she is obviously pointing out that they were a bit weird at first, you know, she noticed that every single staff member were all women, which we know they used to make their wine eventually. Um, they were kind of constantly saying that they didn't, they wouldn't bite, which is very odd, <laughs> like she says. Um, it would be very strange if someone kept saying that to you. And it moves on to her being a little more scared of these people. So one of the maids made a mistake and Daniela just slashed her across the face with a knife. And of course that she's hearing wailing through the halls, which is probably the um, hollowed out uh, husks of the maids that have been there already wandering around in the cellars and stuff like that because they are just not themselves anymore. This next page is more so proving the fact that these people aren't actually vampires. Um, again, vampires are affected by sunlight, not wind, basically. Uh, so this one goes to show that uh, one of the maids cracked open a window. It was hot and stuffy inside during dinner and they all just screamed at her at the same time to shut it immediately. Um, that obviously does kind of, again, tie into the fact that the bugs that are kind of basically powering these women... Uh, do not like cold temperatures and it does affect them so uh you know not ideal to open a window you know overall i would say working for these people is probably the worst experience ever especially considering the fact that you're probably going to die eventually anyway because they need you to make their wine or they need you to keep themselves alive it's it's a rough gig and i don't think i would want that job to be honest the last couple of pieces of information we get from the files in the game is an observation report of how these husks of remains of the maids act. Um, obviously there's certain names there and they all seem to have quite robust appetites. Um, that would kind of suggest that they're more zombies than vampires. Um, but who knows, it, it was nice to come across those enemies in game, they did feel a lot more like zombies than anything else. And then there's the point of view of one of the cooks in the castle at the time and they're clearly aware what happens when you make a mistake in there you are sent to the cellar and drained of everything that's inside you um obviously a lot of the staff in the castle at the time were very very terrified of making a single mistake and ending up like the rest of them so um again it's not somewhere you want to work 
To be honest, like it feels like as soon as you walk through the door, your fate is sealed and you are not leaving that place alive, which is pretty horrific. But that is basically that, layers everything you need to know about the character if you didn't know already. Uh, overall, I would say she's a pretty strong character in this game, definitely one of the best. Do I think she needed more screen time? I would say so. Um, I think Heisenberg probably had the most attention as one of the four lords. Um, his involvement in the end game was a bit more intense than hers. I'm sure we'll see her in DLC. I think it's more likely than not that she will appear in DLC in some way. So, I'm sure we haven't seen the end of her just yet. But this has been the video on who exactly Lady Dimitrescu is. If you found this video entertaining or insightful, do leave a like on it. And remember, we are doing videos like this every single day this week for all of the Lords. Next up is Donna, then we'll go to Moreau, Heisenberg, and then at the end we'll add the Duke and Mother Miranda herself. So, a village-focused week for the channel. But yeah, thank you all for watching. Leave your thoughts on Lady Dimitrescu down in the comments below, and I'll catch you all tomorrow.